Hey guys and welcome to a small video snippet. In this video I will shortly show you how to integrate social media into your Ventus presentation. This is done similar to other third party integrations with a script node. For this video we will talk about the image sharing platform Instagram. But everything that applies to Instagram can be used for any other social network in a similar way. Our goal is to create a scene that is similar to this one. It enables the user to type in some search tag and then searches Instagram for all photographs and images that share that tag. It will display them in an endless slider and goes on searching each time the user slides further in the results. So there are some difficulties in creating this scene. One of them is accessing the API of Instagram properly. Let's start and find out how to do that. There actually are two ways to integrate social media, regardless of which service you would like to use. Firstly, you can use a third-party library that works as an interface between the .NET framework and the network's API. You can search for a suitable assembly, add it to the GAG and use it according to its documentation. But the step of adding the assembly to the global assemblies cache on each and every production machine that should use that library is very uncomfortable, since the GAG utility by Microsoft with which you are able to do so is not shipped with Windows, but with Visual Studio or the Microsoft SDKs, which will both cost a lot of space on your hard drive. So for this how-to, let's see how to access the API directly with .NET classes only. This is possible since all APIs basically simply require HTTP requests. This will have the advantage that the scene will then work out of the box on every machine. Most social network services require you to register your application on their site. For this you need to create an account on their network and then create an application. Just follow all the steps on their creation pages. In the end, most of the services provide you with a kind of application token. Instagram, for instance, calls them client IDs and client secrets. With those, you are able to make requests using the API. While most of the social media services need such a registration process is quite simple. They want to protect the end user from malware accessing their accounts. So they not only let you register your app or sometimes even review your application before you are able to deploy, but also you are restricted in the use of the API. For example, the user needs to explicitly allow your application to take certain actions. Also, your application may be restricted to a certain number of requests during a certain amount of time. Always have this in mind while designing your application. But now let's finally dig into creating the script needed to access the API from a Ventus scene. Most of the scene's logic can be set aside when we want to investigate how the access is working. Actually, we will only need to have a look at one node. The Instagram c -sharp script. The script has some inputs and outputs. It needs the client ID of your Instagram application and several inputs for user authentication, which we will let out for this video since it is not mandatory to get the search mechanism to work. The search inputs are interesting again. Three methods to control the search process, the tag to be searched for and the number of wanted results. Instagram limits the maximum number of search results of one search to something around 30. So this script processes several searches when the user wishes for more than 30 results. In the outputs you can again see several outputs regarding user authentication and some outputs for the search algorithm. The number of processed searches to get the wished amount of results, an event that fires once the search is complete, a flag that indicates whether the script is currently waiting for a search to finish, the search tag and the results including all captions, the name of the posting user and two versions of the found images one with high resolution and one with a low one. Also it will output the exact number of found results. Now let us take a rough look at the script itself. We leave out the authentication parts again and simply assume that we only want to use the client ID for our purposes. So what we need to actually look at are the events on search start and on search next. When the node triggers the method on search start it will firstly change the currently searching flag to true and then start a new task that will process the search. When we look at the start search method, we can see that since we passed a false boolean, we will use the search by tag method instead of the search URL method. When we jump to that method, we can see that we simply create a URI that uses all the information we have to start a search. This includes the URI to the Instagram API, the client ID, a search tag and the endpoints for an image search by tag. When a user is authenticated, we simply use his success token instead of the client ID. After that we call the search URL with a generated URL. This will create a web request, wait for a web response of that request and then read out the response stream, returning the results of the request which is in the case of Instagram a JSON object. This object holds a lot of information that we can use. 
This includes not only the search results, but also the URL to search for the next 30 items. So we can recall the search again and again until we have as many results as we want, saving all the JSON objects into the results string. When done with that, we change all output properties accordingly. This means that we output the JSON object, turn off the currently searching flag and fire the search complete event. After that we also read out all the captions, names and URLs we want to provide in the outputs using a JSON deserializer. Now that's it, we are done. The next search URL of the last JSON object is also saved, so that when the next search method is triggered, we can go on at that point in the search process. So this was hard to follow actually. But we have all the outputs we could use to create the scene we wanted. If you want to have a closer look at the scene, just download it on the start screen dialog of the Ventus Designer. Further problems you may face when creating such a scene are the user authentication, making all requests asynchronously and cache all the results in the proper way so you can make as little searches as possible. So this closes our video. I hope this helped you with creating a social media scene in Ventus and I will see you again in our other videos. Bye!